and a strong voice for children in the interim. So Pam, I want to thank you personally for what you've done. Um, I look forward to this opportunity working with you guys and the governor. I think we have a great opportunity to capture uh, Florida's moment to continue to get the results you've gotten and, and to continue to propel Florida to be the example for the rest of the country. So look forward to that challenge, look forward to working with you, and uh, look forward to the great things ahead. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. said earlier, I'd also, you know, want to recognize, again, Bill Adams and the Ray Associates who are doing a really great job of, uh, I think we had 169 contacts uh, for the position, and I would echo that uh, the three candidates yesterday were superb, so we also want to thank and recognize Charles Hogan and Randy Dunn for their participation in, uh, in the process. Okay, the uh, next action item. This is like a call for a motion to approve the amendment to Rule 6A10922. Do we have a second? Okay, let me recognize one. Uh, if you could please give us an overview and, uh, and then we'll take a vote. One couple. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Before we go into the overview of the task at hand of setting the uh, the cut scores for the performance levels on FCAT science, FCAT 2.0 science, grade 5 and 8, and biology EOC, and geometry EOC. I want to call your attention to a change in the rule language within your packet that can be found on page 28. Subsection 8 of the rule. You'll see proposed new language uh, that is noted by underline. We are proposing now to strike that language uh, upon further review by department staff and our legal team. We have, that language we have deemed is unnecessary for the rule. It's sufficiently covered within the law. Correct. It's, it's in relation to students that have entered a high school prior to the new standards being set. The law sufficiently covers that. On page 28, page 2 of the rule, subsection P. Perfect. So your case is saying we're striking because it's not that good. Correct. It's not that good. It's sufficient that covers within the law. Okay. Now we're moving on to the PowerPoint. I'm not going to go through the PowerPoint slide by slide. I'm going to hit the high points. Um, this Slide two I would like to cover though, and that is just a, it's always helpful to, to have this as a refresher, the transition to the new assessments. And as you can see, last year was the final year that we administered FCAT in its first generation. We've now fully moved to FCAT 2.0 with a writing assessment that will be administered later this spring. Um, and we are now at the stage, for example, where we'll be setting standards for FCAT 2.0 science in grades five and eight, and biology and geometry EOCs. They were first administered last year, 11-12, but they, we are now in the standard setting year of 12-13, which of course relies upon, in part, upon the performance that we witnessed in 11-12. There's also a statutory requirement that sets forth that standard setting to occur this school year, 12-13 school year. Can we leave that? Yes. I see that you've got U.S. history and civics. Absolutely. Starting next year. Absolutely. This, this year will be the first administration of the U.S. history EOC. And next year will be the standard setting year for U.S. history. So the cut scores for U.S. history will be set when? Next year. During the middle of the year. I'm glad you asked that question. Because right. I know because she's going to ask it next year. <laughs> right. I know that has been a concern of the board in terms of the standards being set on this December time frame. Um, historically, uh, I know historically, uh, some of the rationale for that has been the difficulty in bringing educators together, for example, for the educator panels in September. However, as I think our Common Core Institutes provided evidence of last summer, it is not exceedingly difficult to get educators to come together over the summer. And so I will, I, I will attest to the fact that staff, now under my direction, have been looking at closing that timeline so that we can start this process as early as possible. Instead of having random <coughs> panels and educator panels in September, we can move that into early August, for example. We need to have the results back from the assessment which occurs, of course, in June, and time to get that data ready in order for the reactor panels and educator panels to do their, their bid. But 
we, we, I think there is time, and we're, again, next year, it's one assessment. It's not all the reading and math assessments. It's not the multiple assessments we're looking at today. I think we can compress that time frame so that we're not doing this in December and maybe doing it in October at the latest November. Are we also doing it for civics? Not next year. That would be the following year. Next year, we're going to first administration of civics. 13, 14. 13, 14 is the first administration. Standard set occurs in the I just think that's a really good Important issue. I cannot say enough, but I think this is something that we're already in the paper with the governor's trip around the state. You know, we can we can raise the standards, and by giving them two years to transition in, I don't think we're lowering any bar. You know, and I think we should really look at when they're notified because I, I think it's it's very very tough on the institutionality of implementation when we do something and think, oh, it's easy. It's easy when there's only seven of us around the table, but it's very hard when you're dealing with. The, you know, a lot of different schools, school districts, teachers, classrooms. Absolutely. Now I will move ahead to um, just slide six, just so we're fair for what we're doing here in terms of, of course, our tests, uh, with the exception of writing, uh, have four, five performance levels, which necessitates four dividing lines, so four components. Some of the information just to provide context of how we perform historically on science. This is the trend on FCAT science uh, from when it was first administered in 03 through the last uh, year of FCAT science. And as you can see, we are, we are it has been a challenging area, not where we want to be at the end, but we are moving in that positive direction. And one other thing I would like to point out um, in light of the early discussion today about the importance of measurement, the importance of accountability. I will call your attention to the time period between 2006 and 2007. That's when you notice the, that's when you see the line really move in that upward trajectory. Uh, for example, it went from 35% scoring level three to 42 between 06 and 07. What happened in that time frame? 2007 was the first year science was included in the school grades calculation. Same, same situation in grade eight. It's been a more challenging in grade eight. But again, that upward trajectory really started to take off between 06 and 07. That's the old adage when you measure it. it like this is a nice graphic which outlines the uh, just the process. It starts off with the development of the uh, achievement level descriptions. <coughs> then we, we convene an educator panel, about 80 educators from across the state, the, re representing the diversity of the state, um, both geographically as well as demographically. Um, and their task is really to look at the items themselves, not look at impact data, look at the items themselves, make those decision points about what percent should be answering these correct these items correctly within the different cut points. That data was then shared with a reactor panel, which is a different group of stakeholders, uh, including superintendents, uh, but also teachers, parents, uh, business community leaders, post-secondary leaders as well. And their their task was to react, react as their reactor panel the educator panel's recommendations, and also to take into account the context of external data, how we perform the source on habitat, how we perform on name, et cetera. Those, those recommendations then move into the public input phase, and we have rule development workshops in October, three across the state, gathered input there, and that all led to the commissioner's recommendation, taking all that information into account. That's where we are today. Those were published uh, about two, three weeks ago, and been open, of course, for public comment, and today we are at the state of uh, actually acting on those recommendations. So what are the recommendations? Again, this will be a very comprehensive PowerPoint within the packets, but we will not go into great detail here this time. Slide 25. Slide 25 contains, the, in one place, the reactor panel, the educator panel, and the commissioner's recommendations. And what you see in front of you here on this slide is really that cut point of high stakes, the two, three cut points. Slide 25. slide 25, which is page 61 of the packet. Is that the same as this? This is one. No, that's actually the input in terms of the workshops. And what you can see here is that, for the most part, the commissioner's recommendations, which are on the far right hand side, are in line with the reactive panel recommendations. For example, the reactor panel 
the recommendation for grade five FCAT 2.0 is 52% scoring level three or higher. Commissioner's recommendation is also 52%. There are two exceptions where the, where the commissioner's recommendation is different than the reactor panel. The first is grade eight FCAT 2.0 science where the reactor panel came in at 53% scoring level three above. And also let me make it clear, these percentages are based on how the students actually perform in 1112 if these standards are put into place on that data. It's not a projection of how students will perform this spring. The commissioner's recommendation comes in at 47%, so it's a higher bar. Uh, and just some context for the FCAT sign of grade five and grade eight. One of the, one of the uh, data points to look at, for example, is our NAIT of results in science. We have NAIT, not in grade five, but grade four, and the, early, the most recent data is 2011. And, we, and there is NAEP data in grade eight science. And in grade four, NAEP in 2011, the percent scoring at basic and above was 75%. And the percent scoring proficient and above on NAEP's scale was 32% and above. Typically our level three cut lies somewhere between that proficient NAEP bar and the basic NAEP bar. That 52% is in line with that, with, with that range uh, for NAEP. Same thing for grade eight, where in 2011 on NAEP, we were at 28% proficient on NAEP, again, NAEP's definition, and 62% at basic and above. So that 47 lies somewhere in between those two values. Um, and also, if there's the impetus on preparing our students in grade eight for those end of course graduation requirements when they Biology came in at 59%. Uh, Again, that's the reactor panel recommendation as well as the commissioner's recommendation. And geometry comes in at 55%, um, which is uh, a slightly lower bar than the reactor panel, which results in a higher percentage scoring at a level three level, passing the test, which are synonymous. The 55% is in line with the standard that was set for Algebra 1 last year. Uh, when looking at that data, now, uh, 2010-11 data, when those standards were, standards were applied, it was 55% passing the algebra test. And the actual data that occurred the following year, once the standards were set, were set was 58%. So students performed beyond that standard on algebra one. Uh, but the geometry standard now is, the proposal here places it in line with the algebra that was set during the standard set year. I just have one question. On the geometry end of course assessment, that this was the rule, I mean, that was number one. Um, that's the only one that everybody recommended lower across the board. Um, and this was just the reactor panel. Correct. So was that accommodated at all in these numbers? Educator panel is 46, reactor panel is 53, we're recommending 55. Right, so that this actually goes in line with that uh, public response mm -hmm. to lower that standard from the reactor panel. Okay. Well, that, uh, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I've discussed this with the commissioner. I've, uh, the only one that concerns me is geometry. Uh, uh, in my briefing, I heard the reasons for it, uh, but um, I, I I'm wondering if we aren't reacting a bit too heavily on the impact percentages. Uh, I mean, for me, it's striking that the look at the cut score. The educator panel had 403. The reactor panel, uh, and I know a couple of people on the reactor panel, they they ended up at 398, and the recommendation is a wee bit less than that. And uh, I, I don't know how other members of the board feel. I, um, that concerns me a little, but I'm, I guess, known as someone who, who is focusing on standards and, and raising the bar, so uh, that's a good thing. I guess this is... Why don't we let Pam respond to that? Yeah. I, I think um, there are a few issues at play here, and I think that we have to be mindful of the impact. I know we can't be driven by the impact, but we, we must be mindful of the impact particularly when we think about the fact that these are, um, to the point earlier that I was making with Sally, um, these are graduation requirements. So we are going from previously two assessments 
as graduation requirements for students to four. So there, there will now be double the amount of assessments that um, students must take in order to be able to take and pass in order to be able to graduate. Um, additionally, I think some of the points that, that Juan has already brought up has to do with comparable information. So when we're looking at um, the percentage of our students that manage to make that cut score for Algebra 1, this is a recommendation that is in fact in line with that. And um, additionally, it's the reason, some of the reason that I, I went with a higher cut point for science. Um, and I, I think this is being mindful of the fact that there is indeed impact um, and, and it becomes synergistic when you put all of it together. Thank you for that. I, uh, I'm, I particularly commend your recommendations in the science area, which is another one of my uh, favorite subjects. So I'm, uh, I'm content with the presentations. And just for your information, on slide 26, the following page, contains the impact data at each achievement level cut. So in terms of the percent of the score each achievement level. And it compares the commissioner's recommendation to the reactor and with that, and contained in the, in the packet are other impact data looking at, for example, impact of by race ethnicity uh, and other information with contextual data that's provided to the reactor panel as well. But unless there are any questions, we'll go over that. Okay. That doesn't seem to be a controversy. I, I, are you looking at me? Yes, I am. <laughs> I, 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 I I'm, not, I'm not saying I, don't, I didn't understand your concerns. I didn't understand the explanation. No, I understand, but I, I, we're, we're lower than everybody. Lower than everybody? No, we're not. The second, the reactor count is at 53, we're at 55. No, the score, the cut yeah, score is, score. is the no, lowest yeah, yeah, yeah. on that sheet. But Pam gave the explanation. Pam was accepted. It, uh, it was accepted. There's a lot of changes at the, the, because there are a lot of changes at the same time. But, but then again, the child was taking the geometry. The geometry that it, it isn't. Um, There's four, four requirements for high school graduation. Right. And but in four different courses spread out over several years. Well, in some instances, they, they would be taking.